I have to talk about Saturday night's devastating attack. And not as a host of a show, but as a human being. In Orlando, Florida, we saw what had happened, and, and I couldn't be more sad and sickened by the events. And neither could President Obama, who spoke yesterday to the nation from the White House's James S. Brady press briefing room. Because that's how much gun violence is a part of American life. Even the room the president talks about gun violence from is named for a victim of gun violence. And so it was yet another one of the president's post-mass shooting addresses. Today marks the most deadly shooting in American history. The shooter was apparently armed with a handgun and a powerful assault rifle. This massacre is therefore a further reminder of how easy it is for someone to get their hands on a weapon that lets them shoot people in a school or in a house of worship or a movie theater or in a nightclub. And we have to decide if that's the kind of country we want to be. I wonder if President Obama ever thought to himself that mass shooting speeches would be such a big part of his job. Because you know, at this point, he's hosted 12 state dinners, but he's had to give 16 mass shooting addresses. So right now, the White House is using more Kleenex than it is good napkins. And the president, he made a powerful point. America has to decide if this is the kind of country that it wants to be. And the saddest part is every time this happens, it feels like America has already decided. This is exactly the kind of country it wants to be. Because we know how this always plays out. We're shocked, we mourn, we change our profile pics, and then we move on. It's become normal, but I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, maybe it's because I'm new, but it's not normal. And it shouldn't be normal. We shouldn't allow this to be normal. It's not a normal thing. It's like milk from almonds or sushi from Walgreens. It's not normal, people. <laughs> What's also not normal is having the same thing happen to us over and over and over again and doing nothing to change it. That's not normal. You know, when I was a kid, I never used to tie my shoelaces because I was an idiot, right? <laughs> and now, obviously, I'm an adult. I'm still an idiot, but I'm an adult. <laughs> and so I only wear Velcro. But what I would do as a child is... I would run around, I would trip on my shoelaces, I'd fall down, I'd cry, I'd be like, oh, mommy, 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 mommy. And my mom would come over and she'd say to me, get up, Trevor, get up, get up. What happened? And I'd say, I fell down, I fell down. And she'd be like, why did you fall? Why did you fall? I said, fall. Because I tripped. And she's like, why did you trip? And, said, and she goes, your shoelaces. And I'd say, it's my shoelaces. And we'd realize I fell because of the shoelaces. And I'd tie them and then move on. I knew I had to move on, but I had to tie the shoelaces first. I had to change something. I mean, I could have said to my mom, Mom, why are you bringing shoelaces into this conversation? Why are you blaming the shoelaces for something the sidewalk did to my knees? <laughs> Who even says there's a connection between untied shoelaces and falling anyway? You're violating my right to keep my shoelaces untied. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You know why? Because I realized after falling, after falling a lot, there was a connection between my shoelaces being untied and getting hurt. And that's why I didn't say that to my mom. And that, I also didn't say that because I realized there was a connection between talking back to my mom and being unable to sit comfortably for a day. <laughs> but that's besides the point. The point is, look, this is, this is a clearly complicated incident. There's elements of terrorism, homophobia, mental health, but it is glaringly obvious. America needs to make it a lot harder for people who shouldn't have guns to get guns. And to many of us, it seems crystal clear. But there are still people who think we're wrong for even trying to bring that up. This is not a gun control issue. It is not about the guns or the means that ISIS uses. We can have gun debates later. This is terrorism. Terrorism needs to be destroyed. It is Islamic terror. We've got to stop getting in the wrong argument, bring this back to the evil that is radical Islam. And to once again make this an issue about gun control. Look, if you go back to 9-11, they use box cutters. Y you know what? This is not something I've ever said before, but I'm glad you brought up 9-11 because, yes, Terrorists didn't use guns on 9-11. They used planes to kill thousands of people. And as soon as we realized that they could use planes as weapons, we worked together as a society. We worked our damnedest to make it harder for them to ever do that again. We locked cabin doors. We expanded the no-fly list. We even make everyone pose for X-ray nudes now. <laughs> What we didn't do was say, oh, this has nothing to do with airplanes. It has everything to do with radical Islam. No, what we did instead was regulate air travel to make it harder for the terrorists to do the damage. Even when fighting ISIS itself, 
We fight the ideology, yes. We fight to reduce their resources. But most importantly, we attack their weapons stores. Why do we do that? Because removing their weapons dramatically decreases their ability to hurt us. Because everybody knows ISIS without guns is just basically a blog. <laughs> so, like, the irony. The irony of the situation is that these people say there's no connection between America's gun laws and, tenor and terrorism. They say there's no connection between gun laws and terrorism. But what's crazy is, you know who does see a connection? Terrorists. And just listen to this Al-Qaeda spokesman identifying the easy access to guns in America. And in the West, you've got a lot at your disposal. Let's take America as an example. America is absolutely awash with easily obtainable firearms. You can go down to a gun show at the local convention center and come away with a fully automatic assault rifle without a background check and most likely without having to show an identification card. So what are you waiting for? Sweet Lord, this guy's selling terrorism like used cars. So what are you waiting for? This is what we're saying. So when people say this is, this is not about guns, it's about terrorism. No, it's about terrorism and it's about guns. Because you realize there were two other gun incidents this weekend that didn't involve terrorism. Just two days before this mass shooting, a 23-year-old singer named Christina Grimmie was also gunned down in Orlando. And the day after the nightclub shooting, some other guy got caught driving to an LA gay pride parade with a shitload of guns in his car. And this was not related to terrorism. And we, we don't know why he had all of those guns. I mean, maybe he was just mad that everyone kept asking him if he was Elijah Wood. We don't know <laughs> what it was. The point is, the point is, just because there's a problem with terrorism doesn't mean there isn't also a problem with access to guns. And I understand that Americans love guns, but this love comes at a cost. So far this year alone, this year alone, 23 people in America have been shot by toddlers. By toddlers. You realize we haven't even reached the summer. Right? You realize, 23 people this far, thus far, 23 people have been shot by toddlers. We haven't even reached the summer. Summer toddlers are the worst. Summer toddlers don't give a <laughs> It's hot, preschool's out, you know gonna go down. <laughs> and the truth is, I know where this argument always ends up. It's always gonna be the same thing. The Second Amendment, the Second Amendment, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But, but as much as the NRA want you to believe it's an absolute, it's not, and it never has been, because America does regulate guns. For example, the Orlando shooter, he couldn't get a machine gun. And it's not because he hadn't unlocked it yet on Call of Duty. It's because <laughs> America banned those in the 1980s, because it was obvious that they made it too easy for one person to kill multiple human beings. And time after time, we've seen that assault, we assault weapons have the same fatal capability. I think America, it's clear here, America needs to ask itself the question, do you want to be a country that takes reasonable measures to protect its citizens, or should we tell the president to prepare speech number 17? Hey there, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like that video, click here to subscribe. Just keep the mouse pointer away from my face, please. Don't, no, don't, here, click here to, sub not, not my face, click here, please. Please, that looks, don't do that, that's sharp, that's sharp. Click here to subscribe.